Of course, there are many good reasons to restore an old car, but when the tenth person is coming to you and telling you you're crazy, then it's just good to have some arguments at hand, either to throw at them or just to just for your inner peace. So while I was grinding and welding on the Porsche, I did some thinking. Sure, it's down boilable to a pros and cons game, but that's logic only. It's better when both brain hemispheres are active, when logic and emotion are synchronized. Then talk becomes like a melody that drinks when you hit the right notes and I don't know. It's like a hologram in your head and you can almost see it. And while I do it, you get some pictures of me welding in a rocker on the Porsche 912. Let's go. I have no problem with the core idea of capitalism per se, which is worth on a materialistic level. For example, I give you labor time, you give me food that's worth my time. Or maybe let's store time and food's worth into a promise or a container and call it money. So producing and selling a car is worth this material, this many hours thinking and doing, company structure and marketing. All right. The problem is now that a monster is growing, it needs constant feeding, but the happy customer is no longer a customer. And here we have one of many dilemmas around capitalism. The monster, <laughs> the monster needs more and more and uh, the human being has only so much to give. Growing up to the sound of a marching drum, the human being is reduced to a workforce or a buying resource. So now life is not about creating and living your life's purpose, but chasing the money carrot in a hamster's wheel. Okay, let's go back to the days where the monster was only a puppy. It produced cars that were pretty durable. A mistake today's industry would make. Durable comes from duration, so it's made to endure the times until today. Well, kind of. An old car is a weird mix of flaws they had not yet fixed and the missing flaws that had not yet been implemented. Well seasoned with period design and lack of electronics and there you have it. A rusty but delicious time capsule that kindly applies to be your next project. Like a cat purring and rubbing against your legs. So in my mind this all sums up to Restoring an old car is a decision to not feed the monster. Instead, step out of the hamster wheel, slow down and honor the craft that was there in the first place. When I'm on the car, to me it feels like I'm working together with the people who designed and engineered the car. Learning from them and giving back by keeping it alive. Okay, now why do it? Why take on such a project? 
And like everything in this world, the answer has different layers. In no particular order, first you do stuff with your hands, which is always great. I learned that when you move your fingers, your brain gets more oxygen. But sure, for that you don't need an old car. You could say it's an investment. But seeing the financial value of the physical object is one thing. Another one is the value of the skill you're upgrading yourself with. When before you thought, I could maybe do it, now you know, this I can do, this I cannot do. And you can communicate it with confidence. And now your skills become an investment in your social surrounding. For example, I filmed this in March and I think, yeah, it looks okay. Not perfect, but alright. In an earlier video I spoke about my internship at the body shop. That was in September. And in October I got this welding machine and the gas and today I could help my cousin with rusty spots on his VW bus. New skill unlocked. Today I'm not going to tell you how learning all this adds to your self-reliance game, just because I'm gonna do a whole video about it. And I also will not go into the love for a car, because I really don't feel it. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but I don't want to fake it. What I do feel is the pride and the joy I feel when working on it. And that kind of connects me to this physical object. To me it's like a mirror showing me how I learn and grow within this incarnation and even though society doesn't teach it, how to love myself. Again, also for that you don't need to restore an old car, but uh, it's a vehicle that can bring you there. Playing an instrument for example is also a good vehicle for that. Still, staying away from the known paths. I did not have this car as a poster on my wall when I was a kid. For me it's more the unbelievable fact that an absolute dream car that to me is crazy out of reach now is mine. In my mind I have bridged the gap between the people who own the car like this, like movie stars, race car drivers, millionaires and now myself. Sure, they say nobody's better than you and you can be whatever you want, but Coming from working class East Germany, I still do struggle to think big. This car is a physical object I can grab onto in order to pull myself out of thinking small. They say that the biggest problem with growing is accepting your own growth, your own greatness. I do know that this kind of philosophy is a bit of a stretch for a car content channel, but I'm sure YouTube has enough content if you just want someone to explain how to weld in a rocker. There's a saying, if you want to build a ship, don't drum up men to gather wood, divide the work and give orders. Instead, teach them to yearn for a vast and endless sea. Let me tell you about my vast and endless sea. It's the small things. It's the pulling up to the bakery and doing everyday stuff in this time capsule. It's the curvy road that <laughs> spark a tingling sensation in my right foot. It's the smell and the noise and the raw grit that demands my full attention and focus. Seeing myself crawling into and out of this style icon is just so endlessly cool. And while this is all located in the future, the now is nothing short of bliss and marvel. It's the style and the design, it's the magic world of the garage. The tools, the smell, the oil and the grease, the man cave vibes that give me a sense of relaxation. Everything here is meant to be useful, is meant to create or fix something. But man, the colors, the raw texture, together with the shiny chrome bling bling. Some leather couch in the back and the sun cuts through the dusty air. Man, I love it so hard. I love having all that and I totally want this for you as well. That's exactly why I'm sitting here telling a story about the vast and endless sea. That's why I don't just fix my car and go, but stop welding and grinding every two minutes to change the camera angle. That's why I'm editing videos instead of doing my taxes or taking care of the garden. Okay, that's an excuse, I admit it. But you do get the point. There you have it.
Yeah, but that's about it. That's about everything that comes to mind if you would ask me why I do it. There's probably more, but I'm sure it's going to fall out of me anyway in a f some point in a future video. Oh, and of course you have to want to do it. It's got to excite you. Uh, there's no reason taking on such a project if you think you have to or if you just because you found a video with reasons to do it. And in one of the next videos, I'm going to talk about the vast and endless sea of living in this tiny house. Don't subscribe if you want to miss it.